Hi everyone, this is Victor here. Welcome to the Intelligent Investor channel. We're going to talk about Copan stock today. Several subscribers asked me to make a stock analysis video about Copan stock because Copan is the biggest IPO this year. It's known as the Amazon of Korea. At the time of making this video, the stock has dropped as much as 21.04% since its IPO. When it went IPO, Copan reached over 100 billion in market cap. Now it is at 67 billion in market cap. You may be asking this, is Copan stock a buy now? Is Copan stock under value? What is Copan's long-term growth prospect? And what are the risks we should know about? I'm going to answer these questions in this video by covering these topics. First, I will talk about what is Copan's business model. Then I will talk about what is Copan's domestic growth prospect. I will also talk about what is Copan's international growth prospect. Then I will talk about what are the risks we should know about. What is Copan's fair interest value per share? And at the end of the video, I will talk about am I buying Copan stock? If you like this video, smash the like button, subscribe, and turn on the notification button. I will continue to make many excellent stock analysis videos every week that will help you become a great investor. Also, if you like this channel and want to support it, check out my Patreon blog in the video description and become a patron. You'll be able to see all the stocks I am buying for the long term, and you will be able to download the latest intrinsic value estimates for all the stocks I'm analyzing, so you will know when a stock is overvalued, fairly valued, or undervalued. The link is in the video description. Take a look, let's start. So what is Copan's business model? Copan's business model is very similar to Amazon's. Copan is currently the largest online retail store in South Korea. It sells millions of products ranging from daily necessities to clothing, beauty products, electronics, and fresh produce. It has over 100 fulfillment centers in South Korea, covering 70% of South Korea population within 7 miles of a logistics center. Copan is mainly a B2C business-to-consumer e-commerce business. Copan buys most of its inventories and products from suppliers and sells directly to customers. This means Copan owns most of its inventory and has a much higher inventory cost compared with the C2C consumer-to-consumer -consumer marketplaces such as eBay, Never of South Korea, which is Copan's biggest rival, and Alibaba of China. This also means C2C marketplace platforms such as eBay are much more profitable than Copan's B2C business model. Now, Copan's Rocket World membership is similar to Amazon's Prime membership with many exclusive benefits. According to this article here, Copan's World membership cost 2,900 won a month. It gives members exclusive benefits including fast and free deliveries for selected rocket products within a day or before 7 a.m. the next morning. Copan's rocket delivery service is its biggest competitive advantage because it can deliver 99.3% of its selected rocket products including fresh produce to customers within the same day or 24 hours. Now, Copan also has an even faster delivery service called Dong Delivery Service. It promises to deliver package to customers' doorsteps by 7 a.m. the next morning, as long as customers place their orders by midnight the day before. This is to target customers who always work late and return home late at night, which is very common in Korea, and who want their orders delivered by the next morning. Now, in terms of growth, Copan is in the very early growth stage. For example, in the recent Q1 2021 quarter, its total net revenue grew 74% year-over-year to 4.2 billion. Its total active customers grew 21% year-over-year to 16 million. And its total net revenue per active customer grew 44% to $262 per active customer. In terms of profit, Copan is still losing a lot of money every quarter because the company is still in the very early growth stage. Copan still needs to reinvest most of its capital back into its business, especially in buying large inventory and investing in its fulfillment network to stay competitive. For example, in the most recent Q1 2021 quarter, the company had a net loss of 295 million, which is 180% higher than the net loss of 105 million in the same period last year. Similar to Amazon in the beginning, we should not expect Copan to have consistent profit and positive cash flow anytime soon because Copan needs to reinvest most of its capital to to grow its business in Korea. Now you may want to know this, 
Copan is backed by SoftBank. According to Reuters, SoftBank's 100 billion vision fund owns 35.1% of Copan's shares. And according to the most recent Q1 2021 report, Copan's founder and CEO Boom Sung Kim owns all of Class B shares. This gives him 76.5% of voting power. It means that he has total control over Copan's future. Now, when it comes to investing, we have to be forward-looking. So let's talk about Copan's domestic growth prospect in Korea. As of now, Copan's main business is still in Korea. It makes most of its revenues from its customers in Korea. Copan is still benefiting a lot from the pandemic because the pandemic has forced many customers to buy everyday items online, including groceries using Copan. Because Copan has the fastest delivery service, including the one-day rocket delivery service and the next day by 7 a.m. rocket wall delivery service in Korea. As far as I know, Copan has the best fulfillment and logistics network in Korea. This has allowed Copan to become the largest online retailer in Korea in recent years. Again, this is Copan's biggest competitive advantage. In terms of e-commerce size in Korea, according to eMarketer, South Korea is the fifth largest e-commerce market in the world. China has the largest e-commerce market. US has the second largest e-commerce market. And Japan has the fourth largest e-commerce market. This is from Copan's recent earnings call. Copan's CEO and founder said, Korea is a massive e-commerce opportunity. It's the fifth largest globally and grew at a 20% CAGR over the last five years, second only to China. And it's the largest e-commerce opportunity, not won by Amazon or Alibaba. But there is a broader play here, similar to China. Korea is leapfrogging the offline retail revolution. He also said, Korea's total commerce market is expected to exceed 530 billion by 2024, and we were still less than 5% of the total market last year. In addition to selling everyday products, Copan is expanding aggressively in its Rocket Fresh, selling and delivering fresh groceries. Copan is also expanding aggressively in its new food delivery service called Copan Eats. According to this Korea local page article here, by using Rocket Fresh, all of your groceries will be delivered to your house the very next morning. Rocket Fresh orders placed before 10 a.m. will arrive before 6 p.m. the same day, and orders made before midnight will be delivered the next morning around 7 a.m. Copan recently started Copan Eats, a food delivery service that allows Copan users who have already registered their payment information and address to easily order food to their house. All this means is that Copan still has a lot of growth potential in the domestic market because Copan not only sells everyday products on its online retail store, but Copan is also selling fresh produce that promises delivery within the same day or by 7 a.m. the next morning, as well as offering its latest fast delivery food service. You may want to know this. According to Worldometer, South Korea has a population of 51.31 million. Copan currently has 16 million active customers as of Q1 2021. In comparison, China, which is the largest e-commerce market in the world, has a population of 1.44 billion. US, which is the second largest e-commerce market in the world, has a population of 332.8 million. Because Korea has a very small 51.31 million population compared with China and US, many people are concerned that Copan may have very limited growth in Korea. But if we look at this nominal GDP ranking here, you can see Korea is projected to have the 10th largest GDP in 2021. And if we look at GDP based on purchase power parity here, Korea is projected to have the 14th largest GDP in 2021. Korea is projected to have a GDP growth of 3.59% in 2021, which in my opinion is a very healthy GDP growth rate. Now, as long as Korea has a consistent GDP growth, it means that consumers are spending more to buy things online as well as offline at retail stores, which should benefit Copan's average spending per customer. Personally, I believe Copan still has a lot of growth potential in Korea, especially is expanding in fresh produce delivery as well as food delivery services. Now, let's talk about Copan's international expansion. One of Copan's growth strategy is to expand to the international market, such as Japan. According to Nikki A. Asia article here, Copan is launching a trial operation in Japan. Copan is using a small building as a distribution center and starts delivering groceries and daily necessities to nearby customers within an hour. According to this article here, Copan said, we are in the process of testing the market on a small scale. We have not yet decided
deciding whether we will start a service in Japan, not to speak of the service type or launch date. Now, Japan has a 126 million population. This is much larger than South Korea's 51 million population. Japan also has a much larger GDP compared with Korea. For example, if you look at this here, Japan's nominal GDP is ranked number three in the world, right behind US and China, while Korea's GDP is ranked number 10. Personally, I believe Copan will eventually expand more in Japan because Korea and Japan are very close to each other and because Japan's e-commerce market is much bigger than Korea's. Now, let's talk about Copan's risk. The first risk is that Copan is still not profitable yet and has negative cash flows. If you look at the latest quarterly report here, you can see Copan is not generating enough operating cash flow yet. In fact, in the past 12 months, it had negative cash from operating activities of 196.5 million and a negative negative free cash flow of 759.4 million. This means Copan will need to issue more shares in the future that will dilute existing shares or issue more debts in the future if Copan cannot generate enough cash from its e-commerce business. So it's important that Copan will have an increasing positive operating cash flow trend even if the company does not have gap profit yet. The second risk is that Copan's future growth may be limited in Korea if Copan does not expand to the international market. I said this earlier before. Korea's population is much smaller compared with other countries such as US and China. South Korea has a 51.31 million population compared with China's 1.44 billion population and US 332.8 million population. Copan is having a child operation in Japan. Japan's e-commerce market is much bigger than Korea's. But again, as long as Korea's GDP growth is increasing each year, I believe customer spending in online retail stores will continue to grow. Copan should benefit from customers increasing spending in e-commerce in Korea. I believe the third main risk is the increasing e-commerce competition in Korea. According to this article here, the e-commerce market in Korea is dominated by several major players. Naver is Copan's largest competitor in South Korea. Other major players include eBay Korea, Baiming, G Market, and 11 Street. Now, I do not live in Korea, so I cannot predict which e-commerce company they will gain the biggest market share in the future. Right now, Copan's biggest competitive advantage is its rocket delivery service that can deliver 99.3% of its selected products and groceries to customers within one day or before 7 a.m. the next morning. It's very hard for other e-commerce companies to duplicate Copan fulfillment centers and logistics network that can deliver most products within the same day. This is why Copan has become the largest online retailer in Korea in recent years. Now let's talk about Copan's fair interest value so you will know if Copan stock is currently overvalued, fairly valued, or undervalued. One of the best ways to estimate Copan's fair interest value is to use a discounted cash flow DCF model. But the problem is that Copan doesn't have consistent cash flow growth yet. So to estimate Copan's fair interest value per share, I have to find a reasonable price to sell multiple from comparable B2C e-commerce companies such as Amazon of US, JD.com of China, and Rakuten Group of Japan. We're not using C Limited, eBay, and Alibaba as comparable companies because they are many marketplaces with very different business models. Let me show you this intrinsic value estimate here. You can download it in my Patreon blog. The link is in the video description. Take a look. Let's look at this intrinsic value estimate right here. If you look at this spreadsheet right here, you can see that Copan's total value for the past 12 months was 13.76 billion US dollars. Its current market cap at the time of making this video is 67.38 billion, and its stock price at the time of making this video is 38.89 dollars per share. Its current price to sales multiple is 4.9. Now here are three comparable companies, Amazon of US, Rakuten of Japan, and JD.com. Now all of this data is from Morningstar. If you look at this here, you can see that Amazon has a price to sales multiple of 3.79, which is the highest compared to the other two companies. Rakuten has a sales multiple of 1.47, and JD.com has a sales multiple of 1. And if we average out all of this price to sales multiple, the average is 2.09. So there are three case scenarios I've made here. If we use JD.com's price to sales multiple, then Coburn's interest value as a whole company should be 13.76 billion, and it should be worth 7.94 dollars per share. This is compared to Coburn's current 38. $8.89 per share and $67.38 billion US dollars market cap as of June 4th, 2021. Personally, I believe this scenario is not realistic. If we use 
use the average price to sales multiple from these three companies, then Copan's interest value should be 28.71 billion and its interest value per share should be $16.57 per share compared with Copan's current $38.89 per share and $67.38 billion US dollars market cap as of June 4, 2021. And if we use Amazon's higher price to sales multiple to estimate Copan's free interest value, then Copan's free interest value as a whole company should be $52.15 billion. And if we divide this by their shares outstanding, then Copan's free interest value per share should be $30.1 per share. This is compared to Copan's current $38.89 per share and $67.38 billion US dollars market cap as of June 4, 2021. Personally, I believe that using Amazon's higher price to sales multiple is much more reasonable to estimate Copan's fair interest value per share. So I believe that Copan's fair interest value is around $30.1 per share or $52.15 billion as a whole company. Now, if Copan stock drops below $52.15 billion in market cap, then I believe Copan stock is undervalued. So am I buying Copan stock now? No, I am not buying Copan stock right now. I don't have any positions in Copan stock at the time of making this video. But if Copan stock drops well below its fair interest value, I would likely buy a small position in Copan stock because they will be a much larger margin of safety. Again, based on my estimate, I believe Copan stock's fair interest value is around $30.1 per share or $52.15 billion as a whole company. This is only my estimate based on my research. Make sure you always do your own research and do your extra due diligence first. If you like this video, smash the like button, subscribe, and turn on the notification button. I will continue to make many excellent stock analysis videos every week that will help you become a great investor. Also, if you like this channel and want to support it, check out my Patreon block in the video description and become a patreon you'll be able to see all the stocks i'm buying for the long term and you will be able to download the latest in chasing value estimates for all the stocks i'm analyzing so you will know when the stock is currently over value fairly value or under value the link is in the video description thanks for watching this video this is victor from the intelligent investor channel i will see you in my next video